I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make his boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Grace and peace, family. Happy Sunday. My name is Patrick and I am here to welcome you to Faithful Central Bible Church where we believe God is building champions for victorious living and we believe that you are one of them. No matter the platform you're watching on, let me know what city, what state, what country it is that you're watching from. If you're on Facebook, please make sure that you share this with your friends, share it on your feed, share it with all of your followers because you wanna let everyone who follows you know just how excited you are to engage in this time of fellowship, this time of study of the Word of God with the people of God from literally around the world. If you're on YouTube, you wanna make sure that you like, comment, share, subscribe, and I want to invite you to go ahead and tap that notification bell because you want to receive the alerts every time the family of champions post new content there on our YouTube channel. And we have ministry going forth on all of our digital platforms that speak to and cater to addressing every need, care, and concern for every age and every stage. And finally, if you're there on our website, Take time, explore the page, get to know a little bit about us. You'll see there the opportunity for you to invest uh, financially, to contribute financially, good seed in good soil. But you'll also see that we extend you the opportunity to get to know a little bit about us. We love to get to know a little bit about you. Right there in the chat, there are some champion ambassadors who would love to greet you love to say hello to you. Maybe you have a prayer request or a concern. Maybe you have a question about the family of champions. Just reach out to our ambassadors there and they would love to. They would love to answer any questions, comments, or concerns that you may have. We're so honored that you would take time out of your Sunday morning as we start out at the beginning of another week to join us, the family of champions, for a time of worship, a time of fellowship, a time of celebration, a time of remembrance, and certainly a time to bless the Lord with the people of God from literally around the world. As you know, there are so many things that are happening in the house that you are gonna want to take advantage of. There are some amazing things that are happening in the house. So much to avail yourselves to, so many awesome opportunities that I wanna encourage you to take advantage of. Family, it's, it's, it's the fourth Sunday, right? So you wanna make sure that you are aware of the things that are happening just this week in the house. Here are a few things. The Comedy Cafe is here. Every fourth Friday, we have the Comedy Cafe. It's gonna happen at 8 p.m. in the living room with some of the funniest, clean comedians from around the country. You wanna avail yourselves to it. Also, be reminded, we have our baccalaureate service. This will be our 35th annual baccalaureate service and ceremony. And it's gonna happen right here on our campus in the Tabernacle on Sunday, June 26th at 3.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So if you're a graduate of middle school, high school, college, university, seminary, trade school, even if you're completing our Champion Leadership Academy, if you are a graduate, you wanna get in on this time of us intentionally loving on you, celebrating you, applauding what God has done in your life. And in order for you to do that, you wanna register. You wanna text the word GRADUATE2022 to 833-321-321. Three, two, two, two. Really gonna be a great time of fun, a great time of celebration. We intentionally focus on and celebrate education in this house. Also, there are a couple of things that are just constant in the house. A couple of things you can always count on us to be able to provide for you. Two quick ones. Number one, Tuesday, every Tuesday with Pastor George Thompson is set for life. Intentionally designed to help you live a champion life. There are conversations around financial health as well as mental health. Also, there's real estate conversations and talks that will help you to navigate debt and financial literacy to the glory of God. And then every Wednesday night, we have Wednesday night service with Pastor John Paul Foster. It is a time that dives deeply into the Word of God. It's also a time of worship where Kurt Leitz leads our team in a time that is just refreshing, it's invigorating, it's encouraging, it's, it's, it's so many things all wrapped up in one and it's presented to us in a way that just 
fills us up. So you want to take advantage of it. Both of those are on Tuesday and Wednesday nights, respectively, at 7 p.m. Again, held on all of our streaming platforms on Facebook, on YouTube, as well as on the website. And I realize that we have some new people joining us, so I just want to say good morning to you. Again, my name is Patrick, and I am here to welcome you to Faithful Central Bible Church. Again, we believe that God is building champions for victorious living. We believe that champions are disciples. Disciples are those who have willingly surrendered their rights to live their life in, into apprenticeship, if you will, to the Lord Jesus Christ. They allow Jesus, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, to call the shots in their life. We call those disciples champions. Also, coming up every Tuesday, Set for Life with Pastor George Thompson. It happens right here on our streaming platforms. Again, that's on YouTube, that's on Facebook, and that's also on the website. It's a time equipping you to live by design and not by default. I know that just went, phew, that went right past you. I'm gonna say it one more time. Set for Life with Pastor George Thompson. A dedicated time every Tuesday streaming on all of our platforms. Again, that's on Facebook, that's on YouTube, and it's also on our website. It's a time that's dedicated, intentionally focused to help you live by design and not by default. What does that mean? We look to equip you financially with the tools, the resources, the wisdom to live successfully financially, mentally, physically. There's also teaching based on real estate and home ownership, knocking down student debt, student loans, uh, loan forgiveness, all things that pertain to us living a champion life. We address those obstacles that, that keep us from living into that John 10 and 10 abundant life that Christ came to afford to all of his disciples. So again, that's set for life. Then every Wednesday night, right there on our streaming platforms, right where you're watching now, you want to join Pastor John Paul Foster for Wednesday night service. It is an amazing time of study where we go deep into the Word of God and we go deeply into the things of God. We also have Kurt Lice who leads us in a time of worship and the worship team is amazing. It's a midweek refresher. It's a time of encouragement, but it's also a time to grow deeper in the Word of God. You really want to take advantage of it because I promise you if you tune in, your life will be blessed. One more time, let me know where you're watching from, what city, what state, what country. We are so honored that you would take time out of your schedule this morning to join us right here at the Family of Champions. Again, share this on your feed, share it with your followers, share it with your friends. There's somebody right now, I can assure you, there's somebody right now that you know who needs to get this word. There's somebody you know right now who needs to participate in this worship. There, there's something about when the saints of God get together. I know you're right there in your home. Some of you would love to be in the tabernacle. Some of you are so far away from us that you couldn't get here if you tried because you are across the ocean. <laughs> you're in London, England, you're in, you're in Oxford, and you can't make it. But still, I wanna encourage you, as we prepare to go into worship, you wanna stand up. If you're able, you wanna stand up, you wanna lift your hands, you wanna shout. Don't worry about your neighbors, they might come check. If they come check, invite them to worship. <laughs> be lifted up, O ye gates. Open up your doors, huh? And let them come in. And when they come in, now you got a, now you got a choir. And you're able to enter into, a, enter into a time of worship. And worship, what it does is, is it prepares our hearts. It prepares our minds. It, it, it tills the soil of our spirits to receive what it is that God will say to us. It's going to be a great time. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Grace and peace be unto you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Happy Sunday, family. My name is Patrick, and I am here to welcome you to Faithful Central Bible Church, where we believe God is building champions for victorious living, and we believe that you are one of them. What platform are you watching on? Are you on Facebook? Are you on YouTube? Are you on the website? No matter which platform you're on, let me know what city it is that you're watching from, what state, what country. They're literally champions who are joining us from around the world. So I just want to know where you're tuning in from. If you're on Facebook, please make sure that you share this with your friends, share it with your followers, share it on your feed. You want to let everyone who is following you know just how excited you are to engage in this time of worship and fellowship with the people of God from literally around the world. If you're on YouTube, Please make sure that you like, 
comment, share, subscribe, and I want to invite you to go ahead and tap that notification bell because you want to receive the alerts every time the Family of Champions post content there on our YouTube channel. And finally, if you're there on the website, good morning to you. Take time, explore the page, get to know a little bit about us. One thing you will find out that is constant. There are some amazing things that are happening in the house. So much to avail yourselves to, so many awesome opportunities that I want to encourage you to take advantage of. Family, it's, it's the fourth Sunday, right? So you want to make sure that you are aware of the things that are happening just this week in the house. Here are a few things. The Comedy Cafe is here every fourth Friday. We have the Comedy Cafe. It's going to happen at 8 p.m. in the living room with some of the funniest, clean comedians from around the country. You want to avail yourselves to it. Also, be reminded, we have our baccalaureate service. This will be our 35th annual baccalaureate service and ceremony. And it's going to happen right here on our campus in the Tabernacle on Sunday, June 26th at 3.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So if you're a graduate of middle school, high school, college, university, seminary, trade school, even if you're completing our Champion Leadership Academy, if you are a graduate, you want to get in on this time of us intentionally loving on you, celebrating you, applauding what God has done in your life. And in order for you to do that, you want to register. You want to text the word graduate 2022 to 833-321-3222. Really going to be a great time of fun, a great time of celebration. We intentionally focus on and celebrate education in this house. Also, there are a couple of things that are just constant in the house. A couple of things you can always count on us to be able to provide for you. Two quick ones. Number one, Tuesday. Every Tuesday with Pastor George Thompson is set for life. Intentionally designed to help you live a champion life. There are conversations around financial health as well as mental health. Also, there's real estate conversations and talks that will help you to navigate debt and financial literacy to the glory of God. And then every Wednesday night, we have Wednesday night service with Pastor John Paul Foster. It is a time that dives deeply into the Word of God. It's also a time of worship where Kurt Leitz leads our team in a time that is just refreshing. It's invigorating. It's encouraging. It's, it's, it's so many things all wrapped up in one and it's presented to us in a way that just fills us up. So you want to take advantage of it. Both of those are on Tuesday and Wednesday nights, respectively, at 7 p.m. Again, held on all of our streaming platforms on Facebook, on YouTube, as well as on the website. We've launched an exciting new website, buildingchampions.tv, a comprehensive digital library of memorable content from the last 40 years of ministry. It will be like our very own Netflix or Amazon Prime for the family of champions. For a small monthly fee or annual subscription, the user will have on-demand access to messages and special events, searchable by time, historical location, book of the Bible, popular series, or topics related to living a champion life. Sign up today and receive 20% off your first year. Use promo code CHAMPION at checkout. Enjoy content on your mobile device, computer, or television, anytime, anywhere. Building Champions TV consolidates everything into one easy-to-search place. Help us celebrate 40 years of inspiration. Start a free 14-day trial today. Building Champions TV, where legacy lives. But what, what city are you guys watching from? What state? What country? If you're visiting with us, we're so honored to have you. Again, there are champion ambassadors there in the chat who would love to get to know a little bit about you. If you have any questions, any comments, anything you need to have addressed, maybe it's even a prayer request, you want to reach out to our champion ambassadors. We're probably waving uh, to you right now, letting themselves be known should you have any uh, questions or concerns that we could address. So honored that you would be visiting with us. We recognize that you could be anywhere in the world watching any streaming service in the world, but you're right here, and we don't believe that that's happenstance. We believe that you are sovereignly led here by the providence of God. So thank you so much for joining us. It's almost time to go into the house. So prepare yourselves, get your hearts and minds ready, uh, if you're able, join me. Please stand. Let's worship. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Come on, stand on your feet and let's give God praise in this place. You at home, come on and join us and give God some praise. We bless his name. Turn to somebody and say, I'm glad you're here to praise the Lord with me. Come on. 
song says this I praise your name Your holy name I praise your name Your holy name I praise your name Not just today But always Now and forever Lord I praise your name Come on let's try that I praise your, name. your holy name I praise your name Say you can't have it. Reach up. 
somebody give him praise in this place oh he is worthy to be praised won't you just lift up your hands in the presence of the lord father god we have come to praise you we've come to lift up your name and declare that you are the god who can turn things around you are the god who can turn mourning to dancing you are the god who gives beauty for ashes you are the God who can turn shame into glory. And we have come to magnify you and to lift up your name and to worship you for who you are. We want to teach you this new song. And we just, it simply says, you turn graves into gardens. Hallelujah. I search the world, but it never filled me. Man's empty praise, treasures that fade are never enough. Hey, but you came along yeah, and put me back together. Now every desire's now satisfied here in your love. Afraid. I'm not afraid to show you my weakness. To show you my weakness. Come on, say my failures and flaws. Failures and flaws. Lord, you've Lord, seen them all, seen them all. and you still, you still call me friend. Oh, yes, he does. Because the God of the, the, God the mountains, of the mountain. hallelujah, is the God of the valley. God Hallelujah, there's not a place your mercy won't find me again. Hallelujah. Oh, there's none. Come on, better than you. Lord, there's nothing. Say, Lord, there's nothing. Yeah. Nothing is better. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. Oh, he's turning things around. Come on, let's declare you turn morning. Here we go, Sid. You turn morning to dancing. Come on, you give beauty for ashes. Come on, say you turn shame into glory. You're the only one.
I pray that's our testimony. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come today with open hearts and open minds ready to receive you. Lord, you turn graves into gardens. Lord, you step into dead situations and you not only bring them alive, you let them grow so that others can look around and see what you've done. We give you all the honor in what we do. Lord, we pray over our hearts that they're open to receive your word today. We pray that our hearts are loving hearts, sharing hearts, praying hearts, and Lord, we pray that we have praising hearts. We praise you for what you've done, what you're doing, and Lord, what you might do. We come being thankful, being faithful in every area of our lives, of the plan and purpose that you have for us, and that we walk in it in the confidence that you bless us with every day, Lord. We say this prayer in the name of Jesus. And all the people that love the Lord said, amen, amen, amen. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise, amen. As you're taking your seat, let's continue to praise the Lord. It is offering time. It's time we worship the Lord in this time of giving. You know that we put God first in every situation. And when we give, we're cheerful givers. And then how many know that God blesses us to be a blessing, amen? And as you're preparing your very best, just lift your hands if you need an envelope here, if you need an envelope. And then as you're preparing your very best gift, there are four ways in which you can give. The first is you can click it. All of you online right now, there's a link right now in the chat that you can click on. Or you can always go to our website at faithfulcentral.com. You click on the give button, there'll be a drop-down menu where you tithe. You bring back to God what he's blessed you with. And then there's offering, and then we have a very special line item called pastoral care. That's where you sow into Bishop's life, just he's sown into your life. The second way in which you can give is you can text it. Text the word give to 833-321-3222. The third way is we have an app. You can download and utilize that app on Google Play or on the App Store. And the fourth way is you can mail it to us or drop it off. As you see, there are giving receptacles right at the doors, or you can mail it to us. Our address is 333 West Florence Avenue, Inglewood, California, 90301. Sorry, I had to do it. Also, as you're preparing your very best, just know that we are praying for you. And we're thankful for you being faithful in your giving. And know that we pray for you every day, that God would open doors for you in the area of jobs, promotions, and new businesses. We call it job check. So far this year, God has blessed this house with over 226 new jobs and businesses. So if you got a job, got a promotion, or you started a business so far this year and haven't been counted, stand to your feet. It is job check time. Stand to your feet if you got a job. Got a promotion or start a business online, type in, I got a job, got a promotion, business owner will count it. We had 226. We start over here. You are 227, stay standing, 228. You are 229 with an envelope in your hand. 230, 231, 232 in the back. Guess what I'm doing? I'm still counting. 232. And then wave your hand. We're waving our hand. How many know we praising them? All right, 234 new jobs and businesses. How many know God is in the blessing business, amen? How many know you're blessed when you get a job and you're blessed when you get a promotion? Because every good and perfect gift comes from above. You know how also you're blessed? You're blessed when you graduate from something. When you graduate from something, you're blessed. When you graduate from high school, college, and you graduate... We also have something here where we celebrate you when you graduate. We call it baccalaureate service. So if you are graduating from middle school, high school, college, trade school, or seminary, you want to be able to register. You can register and get more information by just going to uh, texting the word graduate 2000 
22 to the number 833-321-3222. Or you can always go to our website at faithfulcentral.com. Amen? Well, praise the Lord. Right now, we're entering also into our political season, and there's also an opportunity to vote that's coming up really soon, and we want to just give you a little bit more information about some candidates. So uh, first, I want to give you some information regarding Karen Bash. She's running for mayor. And then also, William Moses Somerville. He's running for Congress, U.S. District 42. Let's look at our screens. Good morning, church. Giving honor to God, and I bring greetings from my home church and my pastor, Reverend Norman Johnson from First New Christian Fellowship. As I embark on this historic journey to become the first black woman mayor elected in Los Angeles, I'm reminded of one of my favorite passages from the book of James, chapter two, verses 14 through 26. Faith without works is dead. Church, we have friends, relatives and families who look like us without clothing, food, mental health assistance, and a decent, safe place to sleep at night. The Bible says we cannot simply say, go in peace with the hope that they will be safe, well fed, and warm, and do nothing about their needs. What good is that? We can do better and we must do better. Church, do you know that Black folk are only 9% of the city of Los Angeles, but 40% of the people sleeping on the streets are African American. We need to put in the work to solve homelessness, to keep our community safe. We need affordable housing, we have to address income inequality, and we need to create a better quality of life for all Asians. So I'm running for mayor because I'm trying to bring people and communities together to solve the problems of homelessness, lack of affordable housing in unsafe neighborhoods, I know it can't be done overnight, but I'll t attack these problems with the energy and passion I used to create the Community Coalition to fight the crack cocaine crisis in the 1990s. As the former and only Black woman ever elected Speaker of the California Assembly, I worked hard with friends and people who I differed with to prevent an economic collapse in California during the recession. I'm no stranger to hard work, sacrifice, and walking by faith, but I can't do this walk alone. I have local, state, national, and international experience as a community organizer, former Speaker of the House, and a member of Congress for over 12 years. We never had a mayor of Los Angeles who looks like me, and I'm asking you to join me on this voyage. We can change history, but it's never easy. Ketanji Brown Jackson was recently confirmed to be the first Black woman to serve on the U.S. Supreme Court, and all of us are so proud. But you know it wasn't easy. She got roughed up. And I expect similar treatment, but with a higher authority on my side, I won't be discouraged, but I will need your prayers. So the election day is actually June 7th, but I say it begins May 9th, because on May 9th is when you will begin to receive ballots. Everyone in California gets a ballot now. Please fill that ballot out immediately and put it in the mail. So I'm asking for your prayers, and most importantly, that you vote for every single position. When you get that ballot on May 9th, please remember to vote and tell your friends and families to do the same. So thank you for this opportunity to worship with you. Please pray for me and let's make this good God. Thank you. God bless. When I moved to California, the land of sun and opportunity, I found the sun was here, but the opportunities were slim to none. As California goes, so goes the nation. Fair to say our country has been in a crisis yet to fully accept the mistakes of the past. As the youngest son born of parents from the segregated South, I was fortunate enough to grow up in a two-parent home that tasted the benefits of the desegregation project. As a nation, we were supposed to build on that momentum, not digress. Our public education should not produce more jails, it should produce more jobs. Our labor system should not produce more burdens, but more benefits and bonuses. Our healthcare system should not be seen as a benefit because if we have Medicare for the dying, we should have Medicare for all the living. Our government system should not participate in covering up the crimes of humanity, but work to repair the past towards a just and brighter future. 
I find myself a part of this political momentum that demands a political revolution beyond the confines of my work as a pastor, hospital hospice chaplain, academic, veteran, father, and husband. My name is Reverend William Moses Somerville, and I'm running for Congress in California's 42nd Congressional District. Now is the time to disrupt the status quo and simply serve the people. Well, praise the Lord, family. We want to exercise our right to vote. And then also with us today, worship with us today, we also have running for Congress, Sydney Camlogger. If you could come forward. Would you like to share a word with us? Well, thank you so much. Uh, it is my pleasure to worship with you all this Sunday. How are you doing? Very good. My name is Sydney Camlogger, and I'm currently the state senator for the 30th Senate District, so I may be representing some of you all in uh, the state legislature right now. I have to say there are amazing things happening in the state of California. We are blessed to have a $300 billion state budget. And so, yeah, that's worth a clap. <laughs> and so I happen to sit on a budget committee. I happen to chair a budget committee that is responsible for finding ways to push as much of this money out. And I just want you to know, on behalf of my community and all of you, I am working really hard to make sure that money goes out to churches, to nonprofit organizations, to social service organizations that are caring for us. I'd also just like to say that if you have any young folks that are going to be going to the baccalaureate celebration on June 26th right here, hopefully you will also ask them to go to cablackcaucus.org. That is the website for the California Legislative Black Caucus. We have scholarships and laptops available for all young people who are graduating. We have extended the deadline, so I'm hoping that you will go to that website and get you some money. <laughs> and lastly, I just want to say that I am also running for the 37th Congressional District. It is the seat that Karen Bass is giving up so that she can run to be our next mayor. She has endorsed me along with the Congressional Black Caucus and the Congressional Progressive Caucus and a number of other folks. And I am just asking that you pray for me and my family. My husband is worshiping with me here today as we fulfill this new path that we're on and this obligation to represent the folks of this great state and the 37th Congressional District. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. President, also want to just also encourage everyone to vote. The primary election is Tuesday, June 7th, but you're probably already receiving mail already about voting and doing that. So we just want to make sure that you vote and your voice is heard. Amen? Well, praise the Lord. Now I'd just like to greet all of our guests. If you're visiting with the family of champions and it's your first, your second, or your third time, can you just wave at us? Just wave at us if you're visiting with us. Amen. Over here, over here, over here, over here. On behalf of Bishop Almer, First Lady Tagata, the entire family of champions, we want to welcome you here today. This is a Bible-based, spirit-led, Christ-centered church. We pray that you learn something, come back again and again to visit us. But hey, when you come back, you're no longer a guest. Now you're family. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's continue to worship.
on somebody help me bless the name of the Lord that is a wonderful patty cake that's a nice little patty cake anybody know God's been better than that I can't hear wow wow praise the Lord praise the Lord praise the Lord thank you thank you thank you those of you joining us around the world around the nation as a part of our online campus we are so honored to have you with us today praise the Lord for the saints who ain't here around the corner come on give them praise the Lord praise the Lord this is for you this is for you Thank you so much for joining us. We've got so much going on, so much going on. Um, at the end of our service today, we're going to, I think we're up to, we've got about 15, 16 babies we're going to bless. Okay, we're going to have babies. Uh, I think they're kind of hanging out in this section over here somewhere. Um, I saw a baby waving. Baby, everybody waving. Everybody. Uh, but th that's going to be at the end of our service. Those of you who would like to remain, you may you are certainly invited to do so. We do things a little different here, especially when we come to our time of blessing the next generation. It is very special to us. It is very important. And we trust God to impart into the next generation what they just sang about, the power of God. And so we want you to, amen. Those of you who want to remain at the end, you're certainly invited to do that. Listen, listen, we, um, we're, in a, we're in an interesting season now most of us in here, most of us in here, most of us in here have, we have uh, relatives, we have uh, great-great-grandparents, great-grandparents, we have uh, legacies in our family of people who are in our bloodline who suffered, many who died, just for the right to punch a button and to vote, okay? We don't ever want to take that for granted. We got a lot of high tech stuff going on now. I know the culture shifted, uh, and at the end, um, we, we're we're setting up a system in the next couple of weeks as to how we're going to deal with the main election, the general election in November. And so, in a couple of weeks, we're going to give you a chance to respond and to let's try it this way, let's try it that way. This is the first time we've ever done uh, video announced, video promos, uh, and and then we've had uh, Lady Sydney with us today. Give her another hand, won't you? God bless you, madam, for coming. Thank you so much to my sister, my friend, Lisa Collins. Thank you so much for bringing her here. But I'm just letting you know in a couple of weeks, okay, you got to, y'all got to cut me some slack. Okay, work, work with me, people. Work with me. Y'all got to work with me, okay? So we're going to try some things that we've never done before. We're going to see how they work. It may fit. It may, we're looking for what works in this house, okay? Um, some things that may work down the street, around the corner may not fit for us. And so we're trying to see just how we're skewed, how we're leaning, the direction that we're going in. And so we'll give you a chance in a couple of weeks to respond and help us to make some decisions about this very, very important election. Uh, uh, Lady Sydney mentioned that this, it's, it's historical, it's historical, and we want you to be involved in it, and yet we will need your, your feedback, okay? Um, I, let me just give a, another disclaimer. We are, excuse me, we've been in a series for the last couple of weeks, uh, I'm going to pick it up again today, and uh, it, 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 we've called it the rainbow elephant in the room, the rainbow elephant in the room. Um, I, I said to a friend of mine, I think the, the church in general and the black church in particular, as it relates to the LGBT community, I think we were the originators, we are the original don't ask, don't tell, okay? We, we, we don't ask, don't, and yet it's, it's there, it's a part of who we are. And so we've been, we've been examining this issue from, listen, from an unapologetic, an unapologetic, theocentric, bibliocentric, Christocentric perspective, okay? I say that because some of the things that we've said, some of the things that we may say today, uh, you, 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 it may not sit well with you. And I'm acknowledging that because we're starting from a different perspective. We're wrestling, we're starting from the, from the groundwork, the common ground, of a theocentric, Christocentric, biblical perspective uh, as best we can. We, you, some of you are not going to agree with it, um, and, and you've let me know you don't agree with it. Uh, some of you are not going to agree with it, and I'm acknowledging that up front, okay? But I think there's value in the conversation. There's value in wrestling with the issue, and for so long we have not done so. We have not done so, Okay. Uh, I've gotten letters from men and women. I've gotten letters from mothers and fathers. I've gotten letters from sons and daughters. I've gotten letters from 
parents, about their children. I've gotten letters from children about their parents. Okay, and so I'm asking you to bear with me. I promise you trouble won't last always. And in a couple of weeks, I'm going to find something happy to talk about. Okay, because this is hard, children. This, I ain't lying. This is, this is tough. This is tough. I'm, I'm damned if I do and damned if I don't. You know, some of you know the last time I addressed this, the first week I did it, they had it all over town, Lisa, that I was about to come out of the closet. I, I was gay. I ain't lying. I ain't lying. And then the next week I was gay bashing. So, so you know, I, I'm, I'm between a rock and a hard place, but, but I want you to pray for me. And I mean that very seriously. Uh, I've got a tough word today. And um, I pray that God would let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in his sight. He is my redeemer. He is my savior. May we do it in his name. Amen. Let's go to work. John chapter 9. John chapter 9. Let's go to work. Turn to it. Click to it. Scan to it. Uh, get to it. Whatsoever you can. John chapter 9. John chapter 9. Again, at the end of the service, uh, uh, we're going to have a kind of a partial dismissal. Uh, those of you who are watching us online, you're certainly invited to remain on and be a part of uh, our blessing of the babies that we do um, we got over 15 babies today over 15 babies okay uh, a church without babies is a church without a future that's another conversation I ain't got time for that right now okay but um, you'll be invited if you want to remain you may do that if not you may uh, orderly be dismissed and we'll uh, see you on next week but thank you thank you for your consideration John chapter 9 let's go to work John chapter 9 verse 1 says this And as he walked along, as he walked along, this is a the living Bible. As he walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. Everyone say blind from birth. Blind. blind from birth. That's important. He saw a man blind from birth. And his disciples said, Master, Master, watch this now. Why was this man, why was this man born blind? He, blind from birth, born blind. That's important. And then they asked this question. Was it the result, it meaning the blindness, was it the result, listen now, of his own sins or those of his parents? The man was born blind. The Bible is very clear. The man was born blind. And those who saw this man, met this man, said, said Lord, 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 Jesus said, wait, wait, what's up? What's up? What's up with this? Why, why was this man born blind? And, and they said, here are the options. Was it, was it his fault? Or was it his parents' fault? Why is this man this way? Why is he like this? Whose fault was it? Was it his fault? Or was it his parents' fault? I love the answer of Jesus. Jesus says, now one, not now, is that a word, now one of them? No. I kind of ebonicized that, you know what I'm saying? Jesus said, Jesus said, neither, 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 potato, potato. Jesus said, neither, now one of them. Neither one of them. Here it is. But to demonstrate the power of God. Okay? Watch the flow of the text. Watch the flow of the text. They meet a guy. Man, the Bible says the man was born blind. The man says he's been blind all his life. Disciples say, what's, what's, up, what's up with this? What's up with this? And, and they said, whose fault is it? Who, who, how did he get like this? Whose fault is it that this man is like this? We don't know what age the man was, but he was obviously, up, uh, you know, probably walking or probably been, 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 had been blind all his life, maybe a grown man. He says, how, how, long, how did he get like this? Options. Was it his fault? Or was it his parents' fault? And Jesus says, neither one. But that the power of God might be manifest in his life. Okay? Put a pen in that. So about 1938, about 1938, about 1938, Judy Garland popularizes a song 
called Somewhere Over the Rainbow. Everybody say rainbow. And it's about the tin man and, 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 and the, the lion who's, who's scared and, 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 and the, 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 the straw man who has no brain and all that. But the hit song was Somewhere Over the Rainbow. Fast forward about 40 years, a remake of The Wizard of Oz came out as The Whiz. Michael Jackson, Diana Ross, hurry on down the yellow brick road, see? And, and Diana Ross reprises the song Somewhere Over the Rainbow. Some of y'all too young to remember, 1965, man goes out and makes a name for himself. Came to be known as the Duke, 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 Duke of Earl. Anybody who knows that, you just told us how old you were, okay? 1965, Regal Theater, Chicago, Illinois. Man takes the stage, bows down on his knees, and sings Rainbow. 65. Oh, oh, Rainbow. In my heart. That reminds me of how our, we parted. Baby, baby, baby. Down on my knees, begging you please. Sometimes I want to reach out, I want to reach out, I want to reach out and uh, bite ya. Man named Gene Chandler picked up on the song called Rainbow 65. But none of the rainbows were like the rainbow about 1981. Patty LaBelle. Changed the music horizon when she sang about somewhere <laughs> fly, Patty. You ain't flying, baby. Fly. And Patty flapped her way into the record books somewhere over the rainbow. 1978. San Francisco, California. Preparation for what would become a national movement called the Gay Pride, Gay Pride Celebration, Gay Pride Movement. Again, 1978, unknown artist by the name of Gilbert Baker. Never heard of him. He, he designed and painted a flag, eight colors in it. He eventually came down to six colors that from then until now has been known as the gay pride flag. There's a symbol around the world of the gay pride community, of the LGBT movement the Gay Pride Parade, and it is designed as a rainbow. It is called the rainbow flag of the Gay Pride Movement. The rainbow flag of the Gay Pride Movement. But before all of that, in Genesis chapter nine, after a flood, in judgment of the world. In Genesis chapter 9, pick me up at about verse 16. Genesis, that's the easy one to find. It's back to your left, way back in the front, okay? Genesis chapter 9 says in verse 16, there shall be a, in the cloud, there shall be in the cloud a rainbow. Rainbow in the cloud. Listen, and God says, and when I look on it, I will remember the covenant the everlasting covenant between God and his creation. And God said to Noah, this is the, listen, this is the sign of the covenant which I have established between me and all mankind. Look at me. So that the first rainbow, listen now, was a symbol 
and an expression of the covenant love of God. Stay with me on this one. The first rainbow was a symbol of the covenant of God. God says it's the everlasting covenant. And we learned that through Christ it is a covenant of love. Listen. But this covenant symbolized by this rainbow was placed in the earth realm. The Bible says to remind God. The reminding of God is an anthropomorphism. It means it, it is God talking, is God talking man talk with God and divine content. It's God talking our account. So God says, God says, I'll remember when I see this rainbow, it reminds me. The rainbow, listen to me, becomes a symbol of the covenant love of God. Here's what you need to know. This covenant, back up, back up. This, this, this covenant, this covenant of God is released. In a context of judgment. You missed it. The flood was a symbol of judgment against the sin of God's people. Stay with me. But in a context of judgment, God releases a covenant of love. So that the love of God, listen to me, the love of God never ignores unrighteousness. But responds to unrighteousness in a covenant of love. You, you with me? You, 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 you got the answer to the whole message. Because this covenant of God, this covenant of God, this truth, this truth of the covenant of God reveals the duality of, listen, it reveals the complexity. It reveals the duality of veracity. The duality of veracity. What, what do I mean? Veracity means truth. And in the revelation of this, room, of, of this rainbow, this truth is revealed in a complex context of both sin, judgment, and mercy and grace. Are you still with me? Y'all pray hard. This is hard. Y'all pray for me, okay? In, in other words, truth never disregards negativity. Y'all, please don't let me work too hard today, okay? I'm tired already, okay? Listen, listen. Truth never disregards unrighteousness. In fact, it is the unrighteousness that triggers the release of love and truth. So that this covenant, this covenant is a covenant of love, but it is a covenant in the face of, in the face of judgment and unrighteousness. And God says, and yet it is a covenant that I will keep Throughout the ages with my people. It is a covenant of love. So we stand in this tension between the covenant of law and the covenant of love. I'll give it to you again. When the rainbow appeared, it was in the context of judgment, of law. And yet God reveals his love that overruled the consequences of the law. Let's see if I can say it another way. God, God's law, God's law, God's word becomes the rule. It becomes the standard. It becomes the bar of the holiness of God. Again, the, the law of God, the word of God, it's, it's the standard. It's the rule. It's the bar. It, it, it is the immovable bar. When God reveals his bar, my job is not to pull that bar down where I can jump over it. My job is to keep jumping and keep leaping and keep jumping and keep leaping until I get closer to the bar of God. God's standard does not change. And there's a standard of love, but it is love revealed in the reality that this, this love of God is complex. It is, it, there's a dualism, there's a complexity to it. This love of God includes mercy, it includes wrath, it includes grace, it includes judgment. It is a combination, a synthesis of the realities of life in which God releases his love. Are you still with me? God help me today. This is hard, y'all. This is hard. This is hard. So that God sets the law. God, say, God says the law is, the law is this, the law is that. And the, and the rule is, if you violate that law, you face the judgment of God. 
The rule is, the law is, if you violate that law, you face the judgment of God. The rule is, what goes up comes down. The rule is, I don't care how much you love Jesus, I don't care how much you saved and sanctified, filled with the precious Holy Ghost and that with fire, you step out on water, you're going down. God's not going to hold that water up because you love Jesus. God's rule is established. Listen to me. But in God's rule, it is always covered by God's love. So that, so that God's law says, God's law says, when I break God's law, the consequences are this. And God's love does not overrule the consequences. God's love does overrule the ungodliness. I said it too fast. God's love does not overrule the consequences. He does overrule the unrighteousness. So that, so that God... In his covenant of love does not deny the reality of our sin. It's, it, it, it's not a popular phrase that God loves the sinner but hates sin. Uh, and, and, and it's not politically correct. I got all that. Uh, but the reality is he does. There's not a sin that God does not hate. There's not a sin that God does not turn from. Jesus is hanging on the cross. Covered with the sins of the world. And as he hangs, he says, my God, my God, where have you, why have you forsaken me? It symbolizes that God turned his face from his own son. Because his son was covered with the sins of the world. God's love never denies the reality of negativity. So that when God forgives me, watch this now, when God forgives me, he overrules his own law. Let me try that again. God, when God forgives me, he broke his own law. Because his law said, wages of my sin is death. So that when he forgives me, he overrules his own standard. And forgives me not because of me, forgives me because of his son who died and who loved me. Y'all making me work too hard on this. I ain't lying, y'all. So the question was, whose fault is it? The goal of the believer, the, my goal in life as a believer, my goal in my life as a believer is, is to strive for. Paul uses the, frame, uses the phrase, press toward. Paul uses the frame, persevere toward. Paul uses the frame, hold up under, strive for, press for, live for the holy standard of God. My, 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 my heart's desire is to be the man that God wants me to be. My heart's desire is to live the life that God wants me to live. My heart's desire is to live a life that honors and pleases God. This God who says, you be holy for I am holy. And so he calls us to ourself. Paul uses terms like pressing forward. He uses terms like striving. He uses terms like pressing in and persevering. So that this love of God is a love of God that is universal with no exceptions. Just like you've never seen a sin that God did not hate, you've never seen a sinner that God did not love. Lord, please help me today. See, therein lies the problem with part of this discussion about this community. Because there are those who would say, that God doesn't, God, matter of fact, I've seen signs, God's hate, God hates them, God hates you. I don't know what Bible they're reading. Signs that say, God hates you. God hates this. God hates you. God hates you. And so, and so the, the issue of sin and God's relation to sin and God's love for those who sin. Did you get that? God's love for those who sin. God has never loved someone who did not sin. Is this on? Hello. Is this mic working? Can you hear me? The, the only folk he loves are folk who have come short and fallen short of the standards of God. 
And the reason the only folk that he loves are people who have fallen short, because there ain't nobody who ain't fallen short of his word. That's everybody. The little Lee Bonner's going to put that in there. That's everybody, everybody, everybody. So watch this, so watch this. So this covenant of love, this, this, this love of God, this covenant of God, this rainbow, this, rain, this rainbow of love. What do I want to talk about today? The, the rainbow of love. In response to this rainbow in the room, this, this, this rainbow uh, elephant in the room, there's the rainbow love of God. And it is shown and demonstrated in this text. Because the question rises, how did this man get like this? What happened? Somehow, no, 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 first of all, first of all, that's a dumb question. I mean, I'm just saying. That the man, they asked a dumb question. Here's the question. The man was born blind. Stay with me. Whose fault was it? Who gets the blame? Here we go. Here are the options. Was it his fault or was it his mama's fault? Now stop right there. I'll tell you why that's stupid. The Bible says, the Bible, the Bible says the man was born blind. And then they say, was it his fault? What could the brother do in the womb? I mean, I'm just saying. What, what, pray tell, could have gone forth in the uterus of this woman to cause the man to be blind? How could it be? So first of all, that's a dumb question. Okay. All of you ask that question, that's a dumb question. Okay. Uh, uh, was it his fault? Was it his mama's fault? Was it his daddy's fault? Which leads us to some of the myths that hang over the LGBT community. One is, you were born that way. One is, you choose to be that way. The, these, these, two, these two opinions are almost antagonistic to each other. One of the responses is, one, one responses is uh, you choose to be that way. It's your choice. I'm going to come back to choice in a minute. And the other one, other one is, uh, uh, no, 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 we were born that way. Now, here we go. I, I want to give you three perspectives on born that way or choose to be that way. Three. One position I'll call the consensual, the consensual, the consensual. Um, uh, you consented. You chose. One position is, as a matter of fact, it's the position of the Catholic Church. Catholic Church says um, you chose, you choose to live that life. Catholic Church says, Catholic Church says, um, you, just like you choose to do any other sin, you choose to do that sin. Catholic Church says, it is a part of your personal sin choices. The position of the Catholic Church is, you, you, not only did you make a choice, but it is heretical then to say that you cannot change. Catholic Church says it's heretical because if you made the choice to say you can't change, you are, all, you are ruling out the power of the grace of God to change you. One more time. One position is it's a choice. You choose to live that way. And when you say you cannot change, that, that, that's, that's blasphemy. That's heresy because you are saying that God does not have a power. To make you, because that position says God would never have made you that way anyway. It's a choice you made. All right, let's talk about choice. Let, let's have a show of hands. Let's have a show of hands. Uh, uh, how, how, how many of you chose to be heterosexual? All right, y'all don't want to vote on that, huh? All right. No, no, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just saying. I'm saying. The counter to choosing to be homosexual is that therefore those who aren't choose to be heterosexual. Preach, Bishop. Preach, Bishop. I'm doing the best I can. I ain't lying, y'all. 
the, the choice issue, torture. Uh, I, I, don't, I, don't, uh, I don't remember when, I'm trying to think, I don't remember when I did uh, not look at women. Now, just for disclaimer, my wife and I just celebrated 45 years of marriage. I'm just saying. But she knew me before them 45. I mean, there, there, there's probably an age that you get to. Men, brothers, let me help you. Your, your brothers. Brothers, there's probably an age that you will get to where you won't look at women anymore. It ain't 74. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. I'm sure it's out there somewhere, but trust me, my brother. It ain't 74. I'm 74, but I ain't blind, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but I did not wake up one day, you know, I think I'm gonna go after women. Yeah. The idea that it is a choice raises a greater level of questions about the rest of the world. So the question is, the, the position, or rather the first position is consensual, which means that you consent to be that way. It's your choice. You choose to be that way. Now, the other, the other opposing position is, what I, position is what I call the congenital position. The pos, congenital position. They said, was he born like this? The other position is the congenital position. Here's my point. There is, excuse me, there is a theology that says those persons in the LGBT community were born that way. Uh, it was about, it was in the, uh, the late 60s that a man by the name of Troy Perry, Troy Perry, organ, after, commit, after attempting to commit suicide, after attempting to commit suicide, Troy Perry founded uh, a church called the Metropolitan Community Church, MCC. When I was in college, I did a paper on this, on this, on this church. MCC, Metropolitan Community Church, right downtown Los Angeles. It's amazing the stuff that happened in Los Angeles. Right downtown Los Angeles, and he started the MCC. And the, listen, the theology of the, of the Metropolitan Community Church is that homosexuality, gay lifestyle is not a sin. Now, here's what I need you to see. These people love the Lord. See, that, that's what I need you to see. These people love the Lord. They love Christ. They, they, they believe in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, all of that, okay? That's what I need you to see. They, they have a heart for God. Their position is that God made me like this. And it's one, listen, the church is all over the world. It became a denomination. As far as I know, I, I think Troy Perry is still living. But, 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 but it, it spread around the world on the theology that it is not sin because God made you that way. Now watch this. One day at the MCC church downtown Los Angeles on Hill Street, it was downtown, on Hill Street, a young man comes in by the name of Carl Bean. Carl Bean I met Carl before he died. I met Carl. Carl Bean walks in, and Carl Bean says, for the first time, I felt welcomed, I felt affirmed, I felt loved in a religious situation. Carl Bean was black. Carl Bean remained a, a member of MCCC. And then he started, another, started his own church in the house of a lesbian woman, a friend of his, a Bible study. And from that Bible study came Unity Fellowship Church. Carl Bean, Carl Bean launched that. It became a worldwide movement likewise. And Carl Bean sat in this, in this downtown Los Angeles, sat there, and he felt for the first time affirmed and loved and, ex and, and, and accepted uh, in spite of or regardless of his gay lifestyle. And Carl Bean began this church that became a worldwide movement. As a matter of fact, Carl, when he died, he was archbishop. I guess if he kept living, he'd have been the pope, but he just went all the way up the line, became archbishop. Uh, he was a good guy. I met him. He's a good guy. He was a good guy. About the same time that he started the church, he started MAP, the Minority AIDS Project. We have, we've had people out of our church who have worked down there. Minority AIDS Project. Minority AIDS Project was targeting more specifically people of color 
who was struggling with the issue of AIDS. I, some of you guys are too young. I remember when AIDS was sweeping the country. I had friends dropping like flies, AIDS, 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 AIDS dying, dying, dying. And for, and for many of them, once they contracted it, which was called a gay disease, once they contracted it, the people backed off from them. Never forget, some of you guys have heard this, never forget, uh, we had a member of our church who uh, caught AIDS, and he was in the hospital in Orange County, and they will forget this. I go in to meet him. First of all, when I get in, the nurse says, the nurse says, says, Pastor, he'll be glad to see you. I said, what do you mean? She, she said, because no one visits him. She said, he's been there what, how many months, he says, and no one has come to see him. I go in, I call his name, I talk, and I, and I inadvertently, not intentionally, nothing, uh, I'm by the bed, and I, just, and I just laid my hand on his. I took his hand. When I took his hand, if you guys know anybody who's ever had AIDS, uh, your skin, like, turns ashy, see? And when I took his hand, a tear came out of the corner of his eye and made a streak through the ash on his face. And the nurse said, the nurse said, Pastor, said, Pastor, you don't know what you're doing. That's what he mean. She said, no one touches him. He, he's never been touched. And that young man, tear flowed down his eye, making streaks in the ash. Because somebody touched him. Go through the Bible and see how many times Jesus touched somebody. Go through some, the Bible and see how many times folk just want to get touched him. The Bible said, and he touched him. Lepers he touched. Sinners he touched. People caught in sin he touched. He touched them. There was one woman who said, he ain't got to touch me. If I can just get close enough, she pushed her way through that crowd and said, if I can get close enough to just touch the hem of his garment, there's enough power in the hem to bless me. I just want to touch MCC community said, Carl Beans Church said, Minority AIDS Project said, God loves you. Carl Bean would go all over, all over Southern California, all Hollywood and everything, and people who were, who were dying from AIDS, his last words to them is, God loves you. God loves you. He would meet people in, through this church, people who were living with AIDS, and he says, nothing can separate you from the love of God. So the whole, at the beginning of the movement, uh, uh, these are people who love the Lord. That's what I want you to see. That's what I want you to see. The people who love, contrary to what you may have heard. And their theology is woven in their concept of sin, but more than that, their concept of love. Many have said that one of the pillar texts in, the, uh, uh, um, in, in gay theology is, one of the pillar texts is the healing of Lazarus. So that when Lazarus and Jesus said, come forth, he came out of that grave. Some have said that that gave rise to the phrase, coming out. Have you come out? When did you come out? When did you come out of the closet, come out to what was holding you, what was imprisoning you? When did you come out? The thing I want you to see is that it rests on an, interp an interpretation of the idea of sin. Now watch this. The pillar text, you guys, y'all all right? Y'all all right? Y'all okay? We're going to get to the babies in a minute. Y'all all right? The pillar text, the pillar text is found in the book of Romans chapter 1. And what is so interesting is this text in Romans chapter 1 is used as a foundational text to support the anti-gay movement. The, the movement against them is, 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 is in many times part on Romans chapter 1. And about verse 26, it says that God gave them up to vile affections, for even their women did change the natural, everybody said natural, the natural use into that which is against nature. Verse 27, likewise also the men leaving the natural, everybody said natural, natural use of women bur burned in their lust, et cetera, et cetera. Look at me, look at me, look, look at me. So the argument is, the argument is that this lifestyle is unnatural. And what is so ironic is that both gay theologians and conservative theologians use this same verse to build their case. What do you mean? The position that says that it is unnatural against God's will says that this, God made you heterosexual and the people in the text 
or Gentiles, people in the text, turn from their natural make, their natural composure, the way God made them. They turn from natural to what was unnatural. So that to go from what they would say is heterosexual to homosexual is unnatural. Y'all still with me? Gay theology says something different. Same text. Gay theology says, God made me like this. And for me, as a homosexual, to now become a heterosexual is to go from what's natural to what's unnatural. In other words, for me to change from homosexual as God made me to try to be heterosexual, I just violated this text. Because the text says the sin was they stopped being the natural the way God made them. They said, whoa, whoa, I, th that's my verse. Because he made me like this. And if I try to be like you, I'm turning to what's unnatural. Is this mic still on? Are you still in the house? Are you still in the house? Gay theology also says that those other texts like 1 Corinthians and, and 6 and others, that when they talk about uh, homosexuality, they would say that, that's a different sin, that, they, that those texts speaks of a sin called pederasty, P-E-D-E-R-A-S-T-Y, pederasty, 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 pederasty. Pederasty means sex between grown men and kids, related to our idea of pedophilia, et cetera, okay? So they would say, so they would say it, 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 it speaks of unholy, unloving relationships, either by force, prostitution, a, 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 a rape or, or by selling prostitution or between grown people and kids and they would say but therefore if there's a loving relationship committed relationship uh, uh, etc that's not against God's will because we're doing what's natural y'all stay with me so where does that leave us let's zoom the lens out and take a spiritual look at it beyond the consensual and beyond congenital um Look at it from another angle. The historical, traditional, biblical, hermeneutic interpretation of Scripture is that this is a sin among sins. No greater, no lesser. Every time it's mentioned, it's in a list of sins, and in most of those lists, it's in the middle. There is no passage that isolates that issue and focuses on it. There's no passage where God, where God uh, hates. Where, where, there's no, no passage where God turns his love away from people. There's no name ever given that God that says that God hated that person. So that the love of God becomes the umbrella. Listen, but the love of God never negates the negativity that activates the love of God. So that if I take the position that I am not a sinner, he didn't die for me. Because Jesus died, he came to seek and to save those that were lost. I'm trying. I'm doing the best I can. I ain't lying. I am. So we go back, watch this now, so we go back to John, and the question is, whose fault is it? Was it the man, or was it his parents? Jesus says, wrong question. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus says, wrong questions, my brother. Jesus says, neither. Here it is. The spiritual response is this. This is an opportunity. This is an occasion. One version says, this is a chance for the glory of God and the power of God to be released in the life of all of y'all. He says, he says, he says, he says, it ain't about whose fault it is. It's not about what happened. It's about what do we do now? 
God never meets you where you were. He meets you where you are. You never want to be where God was. You want to be where God is. And he is with you, never to leave you, nor forsake you. And Jesus said, let's go, Kenny. Jesus said, it's an opportunity. It's a chance for, for, for a demonstration of the power of God. Now, I should have told you this. I'm going to leave you hanging today. I'm going to leave you hanging. Here's what I want you to do for your homework. Think this week about what area of your life can be the target of the power of God. Say it another way. We're going to wrap this up next week, but, but between now and then, what area, what, what, what department, what, what area of your life could use the power of God, the grace of God, the mercy of God, the love of God? What area of your life, let me help you. Because the truth, and I love the way Jackie Perry puts it, even if I drop my sexual sin, I'm still messed up. Because that ain't the only sin that I have. <laughs> my life is an opportunity for the grace of God. The mercy of God. The love of God. What happens if I was born that way? Is there any word from God if I was in fact born that way? D does God kick me to the curve? If I've made a choice to live in that community, how can the power of God be manifest in my life? See, what I'm saying is, I don't want you to look at nobody. I don't want you to turn to your neighbor and say nothing to your neighbor. I want you to get a, um, get a, get a mirror and be like Michael Jackson and talk to the man or the woman in the mirror. Now, I'm going to tell you where you're going to land. Some of y'all too young for this one because this song was not hip-hop. It's me. It's me. It's me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer now my need may not be your need and your need may not be your neighbor's need and your mama's need may not be your son's need but I got a need you got a need all God's children got a need let's go home everybody stand everybody stand your homework assignment is to look at you Lord, I need your power in this area of my life. I need your power in this area of my relationships. We're about to dedicate about 15, 16 babies. You need God's power to raise that baby in these last days. In a moment, we're going to pray for every father. We're going to pray for every mother, every auntie, every big mama, every nana. Pray for you. Because God has given you the honor of stewarding a tender life. A little boy, a little girl. 
And for you to steward that child's life, I guarantee you, you'll need the power of God. You're watching us around the world. What area of your life do you need the power of God? My sister in Canada who joins us every week. My brother in South Africa joins us every week. My brother in London. What area of your life is a target for the power of God? That power is released in relationship. You missed it. That power is released in relationship. One more time. The power of God is released in relationship. That's why Paul says in the book of Ephesians, for the saints of God, the sons and daughters of God, God has given you power. The same power that went into a grave and raised Jesus from the dead. Resurrection power. I was talking to a friend of mine this week. And the marriage is on the rocks. Somebody in here has seen the power of God to raise a dead marriage. Somebody has seen a, a relationship, a home crumbling. And you've seen the power of God step in had nothing to do with your sex life had to do with your relationship and the power that God gives to stand and to heal and to bless others and receive the power of God and receive the grace of God and receive the mercy of God that relationship begins with a decision to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior if you're here today if you're watching us online you're watching us online there are directions on the screen where you can respond to what I'm saying to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you're here today in this room, you've never accepted Christ or be someone at this, at this altar at the end to pray with you to give you instructions about your next step. There's an old song that says, Sinner, don't let this moment pass. I want to close by speaking blessing over your life. We're going to prepare to bless about 15, 16 babies and families over here. You're, 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 you're invited. You are you, you, are, you are welcome to stay if you like. But even as you leave, if you would leave with a discipline of silence and you can share with your neighbors and friends on the outside, but just a discipline of order as we make the shift and make the correction, I speak the word of God of your life. I speak the blessing of God on your life. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the power of God, the presence of the Holy Spirit, Go before you to leave you, beside you to protect you, behind you to push and encourage you, above you to cover you, beneath you to sustain you, and in you to fill you with his presence and his power and his power and his power according to the power of his powerful power. I speak the power of God over your life, over your children, over your finances, over your home, and may you go in the name of Jesus the Christ that your life may bring honor to him. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. See you next week.